today I'm going to talk about Love and Hip Hop Atlanta Season 2 Episode 9. It starts off with um, Stevie and Jocelyn. They're, she wants her money. That's basically what she says. She says they're over, they can put, finite, whatever. But she just wants her money. Um, she wants her money from, the, I guess, the deal that she did or whatever. Stevie tells her it ain't no damn deal. And she is just like, what the hell you mean it's not no deal? So apparently the people don't want to work with her or whatever. Stevie trying to hang this over her head. No telling with Stevie. Um, but he was talking about how he owned her. And they wanted money. And I don't know. But the deal didn't go through because of Stevie as Well, more money out the deal. Or he's going to probably get cut off the deal. So he didn't take the deal with whatever record label she had. Um, dealings with because most likely he's going to get put out the deal. My thing is, I, I agree with Stevie. There's no Stevie without Jocelyn, none whatsoever. Like, she makes them. There will be no booking show events without Jocelyn. If Jocelyn walked away from Love and Hip Hop, it will be no Stevie. So, I understand what she's saying on that one. Um, the next thing was with Carly Red and K Michelle. Um, they meet up. They haven't really talked since, I guess, the reunion show. And K. Michelle is like, she's doing damage control. Because, you know, the label told her she needs to stop with all that bullshit. So, she's doing damage control. And she said, if she got to do it with somebody she don't like, then so be it. I'm like, so, bitch, you going to be fake now? You the one talking about you real and all this kind of stuff. And all of a sudden, now you want to be fake and you want to be her friend just for publicity? Like... Really, K. Michelle? Anyway, so, K. Michelle, I mean, Carly tells her, like, there's a disc record out, and I want to tell you before anybody else, you know, before you find out or hear it on the streets or whatever. So, she like, okay, I'll give you that. I'll give you that one little disc record or whatever. So, I'm like, okay, that's cool. They, they squashed their little supposedly beef or whatever, but she, like she said, no more records. Sorry if this time I keep moving this because I have to hold my phone in. It, it, it's just a mess. <laughs> anyway, Arian um, and Stevie meet up because he feels like he can't get in contact with Mimi. So what better way to get in, find out information about his baby mama than her best friend because she can't hold fucking water and she wants to tell every damn thing. So they're talking and she's talking about how he heard her um, friend and how she really cared uh, care about Mimi and... She start crying. He trying to wipe her tears. And I'm sitting there like, Stevie, stop wiping people fucking face. Everybody face that got some emotions. You want to wipe their damn face. Stop it. She even pushed his hand because she like, nope, not getting on the bus. But, um, yeah, so she tells him that how Mimi's not happy and he did this to her. And so now he just feels like she's unhappy and he needs to figure out what's up with his baby mama. Because he thought she was happy and come to find out she's not happy in her relationship. So, he figured he need to deal with that shit. So, then we get Mimi and her maid shit. She explains that maid because, you know, I was going in about her being on that shirt that said maid. But she said it's called making a difference every day or some shit like that. And I'm sitting there like, girl, no, you just got clowns. So, you have to figure out how you was going to do this. But I'm just sitting there like, okay, that that still ain't cute. Like, bitch, you still got clowned by Jocelyn by saying maid. Shit, it still ain't gonna make a damn difference. But whatever. Um, Nico there. Um, she's having a photo shoot for her maid shit. And Nico's there. And Nico is giving me the same shit about Stevie. He's trying to pimp the photo shoot, telling her how to pose, all this stuff. He gives her a Rolex watch. Tell her he wants her to wear this Rolex watch on the video shoot. And I'm sitting there like, for what? And then she like... You know, tripping because his got diamonds, her don't got diamonds. And I'm saying, I'm like, bitch, because you're not worth diamonds. Like, he, Nico's doing this for show. He's not doing this because he wants you. So, and, and the sooner you realize that, you'll be okay. But, um, yeah, he gave her this um, Rolex watch. And she she's not happy with the Rolex. And I'm just like, girl, boo. Ungrateful bitches. My thing is, to my, I don't wear nothing that small. Yeah, I know, I don't wear boo. Bitch, you ungrateful. Regardless if you didn't like it or whatever, you showed that you was very ungrateful. You was very materialistic, and that shit wasn't cool. Um, Rashida and her mom, they meet up. Her mom's name is Sherlyn, I think it is. 
But they meet up because Rashida wants to tell her mom about Kirk since her mom loved Kirk so much. So she tells her about Kirk with the abortion and all this, the blood test and all this. And Rashida's mom like, what the fuck? Like, what's going on with him? He must be doing something. So she tells her mom how he's coming in at 2 or 3 in the morning. And the mama not feeling this shit. So she feel like, I need to talk to this nigga, like, ASAP. ASAP. And I... She, she, I like her. She different than, um, Mama D, so I like her. She kind of put, you know, it seemed like her and Erica, um, Rashida Mama and Erica Mama be cool friends. Because they both seem like they had a good head on their shoulders. Um, they also be cool with, I think, Joe Budden's Mama, too. Seem like they all, <laughs> uh, hang in the same 70s, 60s, click, whatever, but they just seem like they all hang together. Um... Stevie and Benzino meet up. What the fuck was up with that? Them meeting up and the way they met up. One on one side of the room. One on the other side of the room. Like it was a showdown. Shut that shit down. Um, but they they girlfriend and boyfriend. So they made up. They kissed it out. They cool. Um, they talk about Mimi and Nico. And how she not happy. And Benzino just feel like, nigga, you know if you snap your fingers, Mimi will be back. Everybody know Mimi will be back. Um, Nico just that time being nigga, like, for real. So, then they bring up, uh, what's going on with Benzino. He talk about how he want a relationship. He wants a woman that got a job, got some money, got some class, is a freak. All this kind of stuff. Yada, yada, yada. They, us, uh, you know, dapper it out, bros before hoes. My thing is, Stevie is trying to get back in good graces with everybody since Jocelyn ain't fucking with him. But soon Jocelyn start back fucking with him. He ain't gonna have time for Mimi. He ain't gonna have time for Benzino. None of that. Um. Everybody goes out for... No. Mimi and Stevie meet up. He trying to get her back on the bus. They, um... They talk about her new tattoo. And how she was talking about she got it covered up. So she can, you know, erase the past. And how he hurt her. And he doesn't understand how he hurt her. He tell her he do understand and all this kind of stuff that he did her wrong and yada 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 and she was just like you don't understand you left me and was in a public relationship with this girl for a year and girl and you're gonna get back on the bus you are gonna be another passenger so shut the fuck up and we all see it as this episode keeps going on how she wants to be back on that damn bus she ain't getting she she is not getting rid of stevie j stevie j not getting rid of her none of that um, he tells her how he wants to buy her a car, and I'm like, what the fuck for? Like, what, what, what's this gift for? Like, I don't get it. But anyway, everybody go to K. Michelle's birthday party. Benzino shows up. He gives her a nice little uh, diamond necklace. Carly feels some kind of way about him giving her that. But I'm like, bitch, y'all not together, so what? She was like, I didn't even know they was friends. And I'm sitting there like, bitch, um, probably everybody became friends after the reunion show, so maybe... He like her. I don't know. But he was feeling her the way she was looking. He made a comment the way K. Michelle was looking and all that. So, Cardi gives her a gift. She gives her a weave, a tea, and a record. A, the CD. Arian Messy ass, go run and give the DJ the CD. For what? I don't know. You bitch, you knew, but nothing gonna come out good off that CD. Um, so, they put the CD in. They talk about how she was pissing on, her mentor was pissing on her, so apparently R. Kelly was pissing on her. Um, and so, oh, she was mad because Carly questioned the situation that she was talking about, I guess, with Miss Pitts or whatever. So she kind of got mad about that. She was like, I'm not tripping about the mentor thing, but when it comes to my personal life, don't question that, yada, yada, yada. So they kind of get into it once again. Okay, Michelle throws something again at Carly. Carly throws something back. They just stupid. But then they hug it out at the end. And I'm just like, um, sorry, boo-boo. You knew it was a diss record. You knew it was going to be some hurtful shit in there. So don't get mad now when you knew it was going to be a fucking diss record. She told you it was going to be a diss record. Blame Arian for putting that shit on and playing it where everybody can fucking hear it. Like, for real. That's who you should be mad at. Um, but like I said, they go outside, they hug that shit out, whatever. Um, K. Michelle and Jocelyn meet up for what? I don't know. But now they all of a sudden want to be friends. 
and all this kind of stuff. They were talking about Jocelyn's career and don't let Stevie run that shit. And she's like, she's not going to let Stevie run that. They feel like they're going to be cool because they both got big asses and they don't take no shit. Whatever. I can see them being friends. I really can. I, I want to see them fight more than them friends, but whatever. You know, I just feel like that fight will make good for TV between K. Michelle and Jocelyn. Just saying. Um, Kurt meet up with Mama Shirley. She went in on this fool from the moment he walked in. He was he felt salty from before when they were showing him the confessionals before he even went in and talking about she needs to stay out their business and all that. But I'm like, that is her daughter. You did say some foul shit to her daughter. So she trying to check the situation so see if they had that relationship. Some you know, sometimes I say parents need to stay out of shit, but in this instant Kirk is wrong and I understand she just wanna understand, especially if she feel so highly of him. She just wants to understand what's going on. It's not like she's trying to be in a business, but she just wanna understand, like, why would you say this to your wife? Especially if she sees so much high hopes in Kirk. It wasn't like no mama D being in a drama, being in just being messy. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But she tell him how Rashid ain't getting no blood tests and she not um getting no abortion and he like really, really. So you you know who she was giving her pussy to. He was being disrespectful. The mama was going off on him. She looked like she wanted to fuck him up. She was putting her hands on his face. He talking about let me leave before and just get crazy. And I'm just like, I just hope they keep the cameras on so she can keep telling this motherfucker how we everybody feel. The world feel what Mama Sherlin was saying. Everybody have said it. This nigga is lost his mind. I'm just mad that I keep seeing Instagram pictures with Rashida still with this nigga. Like, women. Like, I don't give a fuck if that is your husband. I don't give a fuck if that y'all have been together for 10 years. But disrespect is disrespect. And that motherfucker would have been gone, like, yesterday. Like, I don't understand what women be like, oh, well, I love him. We've been together so long. No, fuck that. If my man came and told me that he questioned any of his kids or fuck you. And a horse she rode in on. Like, that's just making him be able to say, I can still do this. I can still be able to talk shit. That's what I don't like about women. They let these dudes get a pass. And then they able to still do this shit. Anytime this motherfucker is telling you he wants a blood test because he think you cheating. There's no trust. So why are y'all still together? Then you worried about him coming in at 2 o'clock in the morning. There's no trust. You going through his phone. I don't get that. I don't get why you say you trust him, but then you go through his phone. I don't. And then she didn't find shit, so she really felt stupid. I don't. Mm -mm. Anyway, moving on. Mimi, Erica, and Arian, they meet up. They talking about Nico. They talking about how she, Mimi, invited Stevie to the uh, premiere screening party. And I'm sitting there like, why? Like, that ain't nothing good going to come from you inviting your ex-man to your new man video screening party. But nothing going to become good of that. They talked about the watch and how she felt salty about the watch and all this kind of stuff. Yada, 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 whatever. Moving on to the end, to the party. Um, Everybody come. Um, They drinking. They having fun. Then Nico get up and make a speech and how he shouted out his girl, Mimi. All this kind of stuff. He shows the video as he's showing the vi whack ass video, mind you. Whack as fuck. Please don't nobody show this. Don't nobody play this shit on the radio. Please. I hate. I wish YouTube would take this shit down. It's so fucking whack. Um, shout out to Mike B. For um, doing his extras. Loving hip hop. If you have not subscribed to Mike B's channel. Check him out. He did some extras. Um, talked to extra review. And then he did like a part one, part two. The first one was about all the, you know, loving hip hop people and their videos. And he said something about Nico video. So it made me go watch it before I even seen this part. And I thought this shit was whack. So shout out to Mike B on that. Um, but yeah, the video is whack. Stevie walks in. He say hi, it's trash. They sit down. He kisses me, me. And I'm sitting there like, for real? For real, that was disrespect number one. Mimi, you was being disrespectful because you allowed that shit to happen. Um, they all sit down. It, Arian laughing with her messy instigating ass. Um, so it's Mimi, Nico, Arian, and Stevie. They all sitting there. Um, 
she showed him the watch. He was like, but it's ticking. He was like, a Rolex not supposed to be ticking. So he called out Nico on the watch being fake. Nico gets mad. Um, he was like, let me show you something real. And he pulls out a box with a BMW key. And I'm just like, back on the bus, Mimi. There you go. Back on the fucking bus. So, yeah. He walks her out. The security had to, you know, I'm, I'm so tired today editing where the security run up. And we just see what happened between that. But, um, yeah. The security ran out. He walks her outside. And she was like, no, um, I want this. But with no strings attached. He like, yes, yeah, no strings attached. I just want you to be happy. Yada, yada, yada. So then he get rid of keys. He walks off. Because he talking about this is what gangsters do. Ballers, whatever the fuck. Pimps do to get they bitches back on the bus. He buy them something to shut them the fuck up. That's what pimps do. Um, so yeah. Then she goes back in the club. Her and Nico going back and forth. Because... Nick, I felt Nico, you were being very disrespectful. He asked, what's up? Like, you getting back on the bus? She gets mad at Nico. He called her damaged goods, which bitch you are. And then she gave him that look like she always give when she made me be on some shit. And like I keep telling y'all, the shit is not alcohol, but made me be on some shit. These looks that she be giving, these white powder looks. I'm telling y'all she be doing some white girl. I'm just saying, like... Y'all gonna have to do make me a drug test and put that shit on YouTube or something and on on loving hip hop and say she ain't on no shit because every time she wild and out Wednesday, I swear to God she is on some shit besides alcohol. And Arian trying like to pull her out because you know Nico was saying some disrespectful shit to her, but shit he felt disrespected. Just saying. So, yeah, they going back and forth. Arian pull her out because she felt like, oh, well, he's t t been disrespectful to you, so let's go. They arguing back and forth. It goes off. Whatever. Um, so, yeah, that was my review for um, Loving Hip Hop Atlanta Season 5. I mean, Season 2, Episode 9. My bad. I'm sorry. Um, so, yeah, make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Keep. I do everything by the ghetto view, T-H-A, not T-H-E, except my Instagram, it's Miss Nika, M-I-Z-Z-N-E-K-A-69. -E talk to me and I'll talk back. Um, leave your comments on how you felt about Kirk and um, Rashida's mom. Did you think she was wrong for going at him? Um, the shit with the disc record between Carly and, what's the bitch name? Carly and Kay Michelle. Tell me what y'all thought about that because, like I said, she told her it was a disc record. So, what did you think the disc record was going to fucking say? Like, come on now. Um, but, yeah, talk to me and I'll talk back. All right, peace.